Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this tutorial on how to 3D print and or assemble your T5 or T7 SSD dock. So I'm just showing you here a completed rig with one installed. So that kind of gives you an idea of different ways you can rig these things up. This one is for the T5, but we're also going to take a look at the T7 model. Let's start off by talking about assembly first. For those of you who have purchased a completed uh, or 3D printed version of this project, then we'll get into some 3D printing tips for those who are going to print their own and the parts you're going to need to purchase aside from the actual, you know, print itself. All right, here are all the parts you're going to need for the SSD dock. The first is going to be what I'm calling the SSD dock. So it's the main portion of the project. There are two sides to it. You can see this side has all quarter 20 threads. On the other, we have a bunch of quarter 20 threads and then a slot in the center. That allows you to actually stick screws in that slot and you can stick an Allen key through these holes here and bolt the whole thing down onto a cheese plate if that's something you desire. Side note, that little blemish there will not be in the final unit. This is a pre-production model, so you won't see that on yours. Then we also have some quarter 20s on either side if you wanted to put like a cold shoe mount and mount a small wireless transmitter or receiver rather. Just remember it's plastic. I wouldn't over tighten things on it. I wouldn't put something super heavy or a handle off of this. It's just there for for small lightweight stuff you may want to mount. On the bottom you'll notice there are two holes for two of the screws we will need and an open slot for your cable. So that is the main body. We also have what is called the base. So this is where our SSD or our USB-C cable is going to be inserted like so. And you can go in either direction because it's bi-directional, allowing you to customize the direction that your cable exits the dock. So that's the base. Then we have the lid, which covers the base, but it doesn't just cover up this small box. It also has a little pad right here, which puts some pressure just a little bit on the cable to keep it in place. So that's the main 3D printed parts. You're also going to need a total of four screws, two, M4 by 12s, which I have right here, and then two M4 by 6s. So those are the four screws you're going to need. And the last thing you're going to need is obviously a USB-C cable. Now, you might be able to use a different cable than the one I'm going to link to below, but this project has been designed around this particular cable. Again, there's a really good chance other cables will work, but I do want to let you know that this really is designed for this particular cable. So there's a little bit of wiggle room in there, and that is going to be secured with our lid. So let's go ahead and start assembly on this thing. We're going to remove our cable and we're going to go ahead and attach the SSD dock to the base. So we are going to take both of our M4 by 6 little screws here and we're going to be inserting them in these holes from the top. So they're actually going to go down into the center of the dock and you'll see those two holes down there. They are uh, countersunk a little bit. So it's a little bit tricky. You're going to need um, a screwdriver or Allen key that is long enough. I would just recommend if you're going to be doing projects like this, get yourself an iFixit screwdriver kit. These are amazing. They have everything you'll ever need for projects like this. So I'm going to stick it down in there. You can see it's sticking out through the end. I'm going to grab the base. And at this point, you're going to want to figure out which direction you're going to want it. Do you want the lid facing this side? or this side with the slot. That's completely up to you. I am now going to go ahead and start threading this in place. So I'm gonna get the one side started. Then I'm gonna grab my second screw, put on my screwdriver, and insert it on the other side. With all of these, we wanna not strip things, so don't over tighten. It came off the screwdriver, that's no sweat. Put it back on and try to find with this very bright video light above my head where the other screw is and tighten down the second side. All right, so now we have our main body or the dock attached to the base. Next, we're going to add our cable. So take your cable, slide it in, make sure it's again going the direction you want. You can, of course, 
change it later and go to the other side. So for this example, I'll just go off the left. We're gonna take our lid cover, stick it in place. It can only go one way, so you can't mess it up. And once that's held in place, it's going to lock things down. So we don't wanna screw it down yet. At this point, we're going to actually stick in our SSD. So there's a couple things to keep in mind here. If you're using the Samsung T7, so the newer drive, which looks like this, it does not matter which direction you put it in. You can put it in like this, you can put it in like this, it doesn't matter. And that's because the jack is centered on the SSD. If, however, you're using the older T5, this one is not centered. So you're definitely gonna pay attention to the direction it gets plugged in. You can look down inside of there and you'll see, uh, it might be difficult on camera, but in real life, you'll be able to see that the jack is slightly off to one side. And unless something changes, in most cases, the Samsung logo is going to face toward your lid here. So not the opposite side, but actually toward the lid piece that is removable here. That's where you're going to face your Samsung logo. Actually, I have that in backward, there we go. It's gonna go like that. So before we put these screws in, we need to stick in our drive. This is going to be the case for both the T5 and the T7. And you heard there, we got a nice click. That's what you wanna hear, something like this, just like that. That means the drive is seated into the cable. Now we can firmly press down on the lid and add our two M4 by 12 flat countersunk screws. So that's another thing to keep in mind. These are not button head screws. They are designed to be flush mount with the project. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread those in. There's one, we're not gonna to go too tight until we get both of them in for equal pressure. There we go, I'm gonna snug that up. Now again, not too much. We don't wanna crack things here or strip things. And just like that, we now have our SSD dock. You can now remove the drive and the USB-C end of the cable will stay in place thanks to the lid. And you're ready to rock and roll with your SSD dock. So same thing is going to uh, apply the same instructions as the T7. So both of these are identical with exception to the T5 has to face one particular direction, whereas the Samsung T7 can go either way in the dock. So if you want to, you could use a piece of tape or a Sharpie or something to let people know which way their drive is going to go or put an arrow here an arrow here, whatever you gotta do to help you remember. Last but not least, I wanna talk about a couple different cheese plate options to be able to mount this thing to your rig. So the best cheese plate in my opinion for this and so many projects is this guy. I will have a link down below and there's so many different ways to use this thing. You'll notice there are several slots where you can run uh, several different screws through this plate out the other side and into something. So that is perfect for this project. Now I'll show you, you could have it mounted like that, like that, like that, or I could flip this around and have it mounted like that with screws up there, down here, in here. There's so many different ways to use this plate. And then if you wanted to mount it to 15 millimeter rods, you could add a small rig cheese uh, block right here. Let me grab one of those. So one of these things, you could mount it right here. You could mount it right here, or you could mount it underneath the entire thing like that. So a lot of different ways to rig that up. You could also mount this right there. Uh, so a lot of different ways to rig this up. So that's going through one of these plates into uh, the dock. So maybe this side would be most appropriate because you have all those quarter 20 mounting points. Look at that, there's nine I'm looking at right now, more than that we're looking at right there. You got the T at the top and then the left and the right. You flip it around, there's so many ways to do it. The other thing you can do is go through this slot right here into a cheese plate. So this only has two, let's see, three quarter 20s in the center. That's four actually, one, two, three, four. So you could go into this plate and uh, that would be another option. This is another plate that would work. These are very popular as well. Uh, it also has slots, so you could attach it right there. You can see on the left and the right, we have a lot of different mounting options there. Or again, you could go through 
this plate and that slot that you can see down in there into this cheese plate. And that could go into any of those center quarter 20 threads that you see. So a couple different plate options and uh, really any cheese plate would work, but these two are very popular and this one is super duper versatile uh, when it comes to rigging these things up. Now let's talk about 3D printing these files and the orientation and a couple things like that. So let's head over to the computer and take a look at some slicing software. All right, boys and girls, here I am in Prusa Slicer. You can use any slicing software you want, of course. This is the one I'm going to be using since I use Prusa printers. So if we take a look at the files that come with the project, there will be two folders currently, and this may change in the future if we add more uh, drive types. But currently there's T7 and the Samsung T5. So for this example, we're going to use the T7 stuff. And we're going to talk about going ahead and setting up our slicing for these different files. So first let's do the T7 docs. This is the big file here. And I am going to click on my object here, press F to choose the face I want to print on. So we're going to do that. Otherwise, you can use this tool over here, place on face. And this is the orientation I would recommend printing. So we're printing on the bottom here, and it's going to print upward. Should be just fine, no need for any supports. And for this, I am going to be using, and this is what we use for production, 0.20 quality for the preset. You could, of course, go you know, 0.5 or higher, uh, 0.15 rather, for higher quality prints. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice this. And really, that's it. Nothing super fancy. Uh, one thing you could do, and one thing we do with our production files, is to turn on ironing. So you click on Print Settings up here. We're going to go to Infill. And I'm going to Enable Ironing. And what that's going to do, if we slice again, is give us a super duper smooth... Let me go ahead and reposition so you can see a little better. So it's going to really smooth out that top layer, um, which just looks kind of nice, but you don't have to do that. And we're looking at under five hours currently with my printer to get this bad boy printed. All right, I've turned ironing off and we're gonna now grab the T7 base, throw that on here, tap F again and flip it around and I'll slice that so we can better see what's going on here. So there's the base. That's the orientation I would recommend for the base to make sure you don't have to use any um, supports. So this is gonna print just fine as you see here. And that's pretty straightforward. The same with our last piece. Let's go ahead and jump over and grab the lid, drop it in place, slice, and that's the orientation we're gonna look at. So this is all going to work well. You could use um, a different setting here if you didn't wanna spend as much time printing, although that's only 27 minutes, and uh, modify as needed. But overall, a really simple project, very easy to get these sliced, and you shouldn't have any issues with printing. We print everything in PETG, but these will work just fine with PLA. I just like the extra durability and heat resistance um, of PETG. So that's gonna wrap it up for slicing. I should also mention that if you have any things you'd like to see modified on the files going forward, for those of you with 3D printers, there's nothing stopping me from tweaking the files and giving you even more things to play with. So maybe we could add something as simple as a little mount down here at the bottom where maybe we create another one of these bases that has a thicker base with threads. So there's nothing stopping us from doing all kinds of different mods. And if you have any ideas, let me know.